You have been involved in Formula E since the very start. How was it going about setting up something that doesn't exist in terms of the car? So uh, when Alejandro had the idea together with Jean Todd, then he hired me as uh, his advisor because of our relationship from Formula 2. So I joined, uh, actually my title in my business card was a special advisor to the CEO. End of July uh, 2012, we were walking here and I designed a track below the Eiffel Tower. Actually not that far from here. I said, look, we can close the, the K here, we can have the pits. The idea was to have the garages under the Eiffel Tower on the concrete there. Wow. It's feasible, we can still do it today. Very similar to what we have now was 2.5 kilometers, not disturbing any of the houses. And that's how uh, my role started. The car had very little development done. It was pretty much done and delivered and developed was season one. Seeing that little startup being built from scratch, everybody like, first we had four people, was Alejandro Alberto, and then the company was 10 people, then 15, then 20. Now it's, I don't know, 100 and something. Obviously, with a new motorsport entering quite a, let's say, competitive industry, a competitive field, there was more than enough criticism, criticism going around for Formula E. And even now, working in the social team, we still get comments, you know, on a lot of videos. As someone who's raced in multiple series, both combustion engines and now in Formula E, you've had the, the best of both worlds. What do you say to those people that make those criticisms now? People always like the status quo and they always criticize new technology. When the, the, the car or the horseless carriage was invented in 1890s, there was a lot of criticism from people riding horses that the carriages didn't look very good or they were not quick enough or there was a lot of these arguments. They didn't have to feed their carriages or whatever it was. Um, there was a lot of very smart, um, important people saying this will never replace the beauty of the horse. And look where we are now. Uh, I don't see any horse in the center of Paris. And actually that transition was very quick. It was actually, uh, there is a very famous picture in New York, uh, 1909, only horses, one car. In 1919, only cars, one horse. It's the same. People are used to it. They are afraid of new technologies, the same with autonomous technologies, the same with autonomous cars. With electric, is basically the present. They go and say, yeah, the noise, the smell of gasoline. Basically, they are trying to, to fill this, this gap, this void of what was good for them in the past. And uh, that's not how we progress with civilization and technologies. You have to look at the fundamentals. If they are correct, the technology will move further regardless of your opinion or my opinion or his opinion or any subjective point. And this is electric cars. When I was young, my dream was to drive a car, to own a car. The new generation now, the kids, the teenagers, they don't want to own cars anymore. That's to start. It's not even talking about combustion or not. And talking about petrol heads, of course. You remember when you were a kid listening to the engine, the V10. I have a V10 at home. Manual, I still like to drive it, of course. But um, this does not relate to the technology that will be in the future. And of course, again, like you said, you cannot relate both technologies, you cannot compare them. But nevertheless, they managed to make a very successful championship, which is sporting wise is very similar to combustion. So we are fighting on track, the cars are fast, everything is good. I fully comprehend and understand people's complaint and they, they are not obliged to like Formula E. If they like it, they like the racing, they watch. If they don't, they'll go watch something else. And that's perfectly normal. You're involved in an electric bike company of some sort, yes, right? Yeah. Obviously, you have the association with Robo Race, and I've seen you multiple times whizzing up and down the pit lane on an electric skateboard or on an electric surfboard or wakeboard, yes. which I need to find out about because that looks amazing. Yeah. Going forward, how much do you think electric mobility, what sort of difference can it make, and why is it so important for young generations to get involved? For me, it's divided in two main points. We are a laboratory, so we're developing the technology. Um, the manufacturers are flocking in, we have more manufacturers than F1, IndyCar, combined both. And second is acting on people's perception of electric vehicles. They can be fast, they can be sexy. So when next time they go and buy something, they already have in their mind, look, I've seen Formula E, it's fast, let me try. And if Formula E is sl slightly successful in any of these two parameters, it already changes a big time how the world progresses. They will create a demand for this technology and electric cars will be the norm and everybody will breathe better air. There is a morality duty 
to use the knowledge that you acquire in your field of profession to try to benefit the world in somehow, somehow. And motorsport is actually quite difficult to find this relation because in the end you're going around circles, burning tire, burning fuel, uh, used to be like this, and uh, what's the benefit apart from entertainment? The electric cars, when they are driven in cities, means that you're not emitting toxic gases where people breathe. And that creates a, a, actually a super positive effect in well-being, healthcare, uh, and quality of life of people. And I decided to partner with the UN to focus especially on this matter. So the topic of environmental issues, sustainability, it's becoming wider. People are talking about it, but also people want to play their part. What, can you, what would you suggest personally with your experience? Small, simple, achievable things that people can do to start making a difference. To start with, and probably one of the most important points, it's to eat less meat. I am, I'm not vegetarian, but I reduced a lot uh, about how much meat I consume uh, because this has a huge environmental impact. Better mobility, so whenever possible, ride bikes, ride electric bikes, ride these e-scooters. If you can afford, ride an electric car. Um, try to offset as much as you can of the carbon emission that you do. And another very special point, try to reduce the amount of waste you produce, like plastic bags and straws and overall waste. This is, uh, is what is killing the environment. It's fascinating stuff, Lucas. Thanks so much for chatting to me. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you.